If you want to see me swatch the Linda Halvari Spectral Palette, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elen, and yes, this is the palette we are going to be swatching today. I call it the sugar pill version of Linda Halbari products, or Linda Halberg, whichever way you want to say it. I really was on the fence on this palette, and then I saw Mel Thompson do a look with it, and I also saw and Jelleka Nikvist do a look with it, and I thought, okay, well, let, let me just, I, I, I'm going to noodle. I'm going to noodle and figure out whether or not I'm going to get it. And then Linda was having a fantastic sale on her site because she was up for a significant award in Sweden, and Sweden or Denmark, I'm not sure where the award was, but she was up for a significant award and she was celebrating and had a great sale. And so I decided to uh, to pick it up. Among other things, if you look at what's going on video-wise on this channel, you will see a lot of different swatches of her products because I took the opportunity to get quite a bit and actually held myself back from placing a second order. So I there's a lot on her site that I am excited about and I'm looking forward to getting more of her uh, pencils, actually. If you want to see the swatches of the pencils, I will put it right there for you. So let's talk about this palette. So the um, packaging and the palette are virtually identical. One is not quite as shiny as the other. And it really is reflective, which I appreciate. It's very reflective what is on the inside. So pardon the ring light, but these are the colors. And it's not all mattes, even though it might look like it a little bit. There are, let's see, one, two, three, four mattes. So these four right here. This one is very interesting. It's between a lime and a mint green. I'm very interested in it. It's called Faint. Um, dim up here. And uh, this one's a shimmer. And this one is a matte dim and unknown. To me, look like they would be blush options for my skin tone. And I'm very curious to see what happens with Illusion, which looks like a, kind of looks like a metallic. And finally, the one that I was least interested in, but apparently is the bell of the ball, is Abstract. And Abstract is, is somewhat of a transformer shade. So I'm really curious to see what these are like oh and i should mention one other thing that i'm aware of is occult was put in this palette as a deepening option for the other shades and occult i think is a good name for a shade that is supposed to be transformer deepener for all the other shades i think it makes sense and i like the fact that because everything else mostly is pastels she didn't take a black she went with a deeper purple and I think that that is it has really good potential for helping get a look just right with depth where you want it so I'm pretty excited about it I am not going to use my pinky I'm starting to use my pinky less for swatches and I think I'm going to do go two two by two so I think I'm going to I don't want to go with the order of the palette actually I want to keep the most exciting stuff last. So I'm going to go with pastels first. So these three and this one. And uh, yeah, let's do that. We'll do pastels, shimmers, and then we'll do the other two that I think are the most transformative in the palette um, after the, the mattes. So uh, let's do the two purples first, the more uh, lilac -y pastel and occult so we'll do eerie and occult like I said I'm going to do two swatches at a time they are very finely milled wow okay good to know I'm I went in pretty hard on eerie and I shouldn't have because they're very very fine okay so here we go the first two use this arm here for the swatches let's see what these look like
okay, really good color saturation right off the hop, and it's a pastel, so I'm pretty happy with that. And Occult has a little bit of a, a burgundy, burgundy purple, really. Okay, so here are the first two, and I always go in twice. So for <laughs> Erie, I'm just going to pick up the kick up because I picked up quite a bit the first time. I don't have to do very much in the pan at all. And then Occult. Occult is a little bit more gritty than uh, Erie is, but that's not unusual for a purple or burgundy color, and it is kind of both. So let's do a second pass on those two. I've been doing a lot of swatching today. My hands are so dry now, and I didn't put lotion in between the two videos. Oh no. So sorry, my hands are really bad. Okay, Occult doesn't build up as much as I thought it would. Maybe I didn't pick up enough. Let me just go a little bit in. It's got the depth to it, but it just didn't, certainly didn't wow me on the second go. Let's just try it one more time. I want to see the buildup of the, oh yeah, there we go. I just didn't go, I didn't use much more this time around, but boy, did it make a difference. Okay, so we have to keep in mind that this was a possibly a botched second swatch, but you know what, it's second go on the, the, the swatch, but it, you know, we'll have to consider that I went in three times on that one, but the colors are really nice. And you can see the white base on uh, Erie for sure. There's, there was quite a bit of fallout from, um, from Occult on my hand. I don't know if you could see that. There was quite a bit uh, coming down on my hand. That could just be how lousy I was with picking up those two colors, though. I've not had that kind of weird weirdness with swatching really all that much, so I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. Okay, so fingers are clean. We're going to go into the other two pastels. We're going to go into Phantom and Unknown. I think I'm going to do Unknown first so that it can be next to the, uh, the purples. I have to be really careful with how I pick up. Um, they're very, very fine. More, way finer than I'm used to. So I, finally, I'm being more careful in Phantom. And I've been swatching some really nice shadows. It's not like I'm um, swatching lousy stuff and then going to, to the good stuff. But anyway, so this is unknown. Oh boy, that is bright. It's a pastel, but it's very bright. That's great. And then Phantom. That is a nice minty green. Kind of between a minty green and a Kelly green, right? It's got more to it than, or maybe a um, mint green and a touch of turquoise. It's a very unusual color. So the fingers, let's go in a second time. Now I'm picking up what I can from unknown without trying not to kick up some more. And then Phantom, I did a good job. I'm going to do the same as I did before. Okay, I think we have enough from those two to do the second set of swatches. Unknown, oh yeah, that builds up beautifully. That was just effortless. And then Phantom. I wonder why it's called Phantom. It's not a, a name I would pick for that color. Okay, we're halfway through the palette. These are the fingers. And now we're going to go into the two shimmers. So we have the uh, kind of a peach and a um, lime green, mint green color which I'm really curious slash excited about. So we're going to go into dim and faint. Okay, and I think I'm going to put faint, I'm going to do faint first so that it can go next to um, phantom so we can see the difference in the two greens. So let's do that first. Faint. 
Okay, they already pick up better than the uh, the mats. And mats do, sometimes mats are very crumbly and weird. And that's in whichever brand. So I don't have any concern over the mats at this point. So we've got um, Faint, I think, yeah. Oh, that is my favorite so far in the palette. But I'm a sucker for lime green. So Faint and Dim. Oh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. I really like those two. Okay, I'm liking the first pass on those. Very nice. I knew I would like Faint, though. Faint was a no-brainer. Okay, second pass. Don't really think they need it, but let's go for it anyway. So Faint, yeah, Faint looks like it has a yellow base. And Dim. Which is more of a shimmery, satiny, almost um, tangerine orange. Oh, they're nice. I don't have a problem with either one of them. I'm, I'm happy with them. Not something that I think is crazy unique or anything, but they're, they're nice shimmers and I can see how they would pair really well with pink and the purples. So I'm, I'm quite happy with them. And we're going to go in with the last two and the last two are, as I would call them, more of the uh, unique uh, transformer shades, aside from Occult, because Occult was a color that was meant to help deepen up the other ones. So let's go in with Illusion first and Abstract as well. So let's go Illusion on the index. Oh, it's very gritty. That's kind of like a topper for the other shades, I think. I think you could go really lightly and add sparkle to any of the colors. I get that feeling anyway. We'll see how it applies. And then abstract, which is not as gritty. You can tell there's something interesting. Oh yeah, it's definitely duochrome. It's got um, the blue base and a shimmery purple shift. So I can see how this would do interesting things on other colors. So let's try these two. Yeah, it has the texture that would make it possible to almost like pepper onto other colors. It's very blingy. Oh yeah, look at abstract. I'm very curious to know what abstract does on each one of the other colors. That is a very interesting color. It makes me think of um, one of the Enchanted Secrets type toppers. That's really what it makes me think of. Now, I don't think I'm going to re-swatch this one because it is extremely opaque. If any okay, so I didn't add any product on this finger. I'm just going to see if I can layer it lightly on another color. And then this one I want to do the second layer on. So this is abstract. Yeah, it definitely has a transparent base. I would call it um, an Enchanted Secrets type of a transformer shade. And then this one, I wanted to see if I could dust it on another color. So let's try it on the... the um, Lilac-y purple. Yeah, do you see how it's adding shimmer? Just a little layer of shimmer on top. So this is really adding some dimension to another color. Okay, so, and it makes sense that it's called Illusion. I can see how that would work. Um, and then the, um, the purple, I'm curious to see if it does something similar as well. So maybe I'll try the, the sum purple transformer on the pink here. Let's just see if I can add some more and, and see if I can get uh, abstract to transform another shade. Okay, so again abstract and putting it again on the pink. Oh, got a little occult in there too. So can you, I'm hoping you can see 
that it went from pink to a purpley blue shift on top. So I'm wondering what um, abstract looks like on, I'm just going to use a clean finger here, just using abstract on one of the other shades. So maybe on um, Phantom, Let's see what it does. It definitely makes any of the mattes shimmery and it does transform the color a little bit. Now probably less on this kind of a uh, turquoise um, matte because of the fact that it's it's a blue but it still does it still does shift the turquoise to a certain extent. That's interesting. There's a lot to it. Um, one last one, I want to use it on the burgundy. So let's do that on occult. Let's see what happens there. I'm starting to see there's a lot that can go on here with this palette. Oh yeah, there's a definite shift there too. Do you see that? Compared to the matte bottom, It really allows for the blue shimmer to come through. So it looks like you could use one color as a base and use um, abstract to, to transform part of your eye look. Okay, that's really, uh, really interesting. So yeah, these two I would definitely call uh, transformer shades in a certain way and maybe occult as the third as the deepener but it's not just eight pans of shadow she has she created a, a pastel toolbox basically to do some interesting looks and I think that I would use the back of my hand method to plan out a look with this palette if you want to know more about how I plan out looks using the back of my hand let me know, I can do a video on it. But I would definitely feel like an alchemist before doing a look and testing out every type of application that I want to use on my eye, on my hand, and make sure that I have my recipe for the eye look figured out before starting. And I don't do that with very many palettes because there aren't that many eyeshadows that are a bit of a mystery to me, but Linda Halbari has done that to me before with the, the quads. So I'm, it's almost like this is a quad, the quad version of Linda's products, but in a palette form. There's a lot more to this swatches video than I expected there to be, but I'm delighted. I think that there's a lot to figure out with these couple of shadows and I'm really excited to play with them and see what I come up with. It's probably going to be a brand new focus in and of itself. It just looks way more, looks like there's way more depth and it's more, there's more involved with this palette than I ever expected to begin with. So yeah, stay tuned. You'll see more of this palette for sure on this channel. There's no question. It's going to be an enigma that I want to solve. I hope you enjoyed this swatches video. Uh, let me know what you think of the eight shadows, transformer, mix of both uh, in the comments. Uh, do you have this palette? Do you have any tips or tricks for me? I would love to hear if you do. Uh, and any other comments or thoughts on this swatches video, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, but for now, take care.